Frank Walks, powered by Body Armor. I can't believe it. Big Cat is a menace. I tell you, he's a menace. He has my tormentor joining us for a walk. I know he's gonna ridicule the Mets, laugh at the Dolphins collapse, laugh at the devil struggles. Yeah, that's right. SVP, Scott Van Pelt is joining me on Frank Walks. Big Cat. This walk with Frank and SVP is a long time coming. They don't like each other. Well, Frank doesn't like SVP. Let's put it that way. I don't think SVP has any ill will towards Frank. It's funny because the two of those guys, if you had to list the most universally loved people in sports, I think they're one and two, Frank and SVP. So the fact that they could never get along uh, hurt me, and I want to see them, you know, mend their ways and come together and, and talk it out, maybe hug it out. Scott and Pelt, his head is spinning with joy. He had the checklist, and he had the checklist. Dolphins lose. He's going to be spinning tonight. Scott and Pelt gone. Scott and Pelt at the game, and he was going like this, going, going like this. There's nothing worse than the Devils. Scott and Pelt's head is the is a siren. The reason I came for a walk with Frank is because. A, I have to find out what it is I did to this man. So there's there's a selfish reason, like what is it? What happened? What did I do? But more importantly, I, I just want him to know I have his back. I think it's awesome what he's doing. I meant what I said on Twitter. I mean, the guys out here, you guys are a huge part of it, like inspiring the guy to just get out and get better. We saw him out there on the lacrosse field making moves, getting nimble, good feet. I mean. It's the nation's capital. What's more, Amer what's a more American story than Frank Fleming becoming a true icon? Hey, Frank. Hey. <laughs> How are you, man? All right. Thanks for sticking around and let me take a walk with you. Yeah, yeah. It's great Just to meet you. One question. Why yeah. do you hate my team so much? <laughs> well, I, why do you think I hate your team so much? What happened? Well, I, I, I have a theory. I have a theory. Is it possible that the Mets lost and then SportsCenter started and I was there and maybe I was smiling to try to welcome in the audience and in that moment, you know what it is? you're like, he hates my team. I'm the me you're the messenger. Uh -huh. I'm the king. Yeah, and you don't have to mention your delivers bad news. Yeah, yeah. I, I I swear to you, I don't hate your uh, team. Uh, I don't hate the Devils. I don't hate the Mets. I don't. It you just. Don't, I, I don't expect you to believe me. I just, I just I, the Mets have tormented me. Yeah. Yeah. The Mets have. I mean, let me let me explain what it's like to be a Mets fan. They are the ultimate tease. I I say that the Mets are always teasing, never pleasing. Yeah that they give you false hope and then they rip your heart out like uh, the guy from uh, Indiana Jones and then they laugh at you. They have the heart in their hand and they're laughing at you. Right. As they rip the heart out of your chest every single year. And they, show, and they, they show it to you? Yes. Is it still beating? Yes. That sucks. That's, that's what it's like to be a Mets fan. Well, let me ask you something. As an Oriole fan, I mean... Now, you're still an Oriole fan because I know you're a big Washington guy. Yeah, but I... But you see, never went over to the Nationals when they came? No, because, see, I am I was too young for the Senators, and I was too old for the Nationals, and so I grew up with the Orioles. And so, I just... I'm like you. I'm not going to abandon my team. Like, people say you should just root for somebody else. Like, that would be like if somebody said to you, oh, you should just root for the Yankees. You'd be like, I can't root for the I know. Yankees. You can't, I, just, you can't just put on a new hat. You're a grown man. I've, I've done the switch recently in basketball because, first off, the Nets left me. That's fair. They left me. The last, I, I, I spent 10 years of basically not caring about basketball. They made me care again by signing these three players. How'd that go? It was drama, nothing but drama. Right. It made me resent the Nets. Then I went to the Barclays Center and the arena is terrible. They should have stayed in New Jersey. And you know, they Barclays left me is when a bad they were, arena? Oh it is. Why? It's it's kinda of dark in there, it's dank, it's just like there's no like charm, there's no energy to it. It's okay. it, it, it's it, they missed. So so now so you you're a Nick fan? Yeah. Go Knicks, go. Yep. Let me I'm, go back to the Mets. I have, I have to ask you something about the Mets. I'll get, and then Knicks, we'll get back to the Knicks. 
What's, I always ask my guy Stanford Steve this, what's your optimism meter for the Mets for this year? I, saw, I looked at the win total, it's like 82, so they're not supposed to be great, they're not supposed to suck. What, you, optimism meter, is it always pegged at zero? Always? It's now at zero, yeah. Come on. Yeah. You know what I always say? Be optimistic because it costs the same. You're telling me optimism is just too expensive at this point. I just, I'm out of optimism. Last year broke me. Last year broke the last bit of optimism I had. Was there a specific moment? Was there like, was it injuries? Was it trades? What, what, I, there were a few rants I saw, and I know I, Edwin was, Diaz, I know it was my fault. Edwin Diaz going, going down. Oh, that's, that was awful. And you definitely blame me for, the, for that, for the injury, right? Was I smiling, head spinning? Yeah, well, it's, it's not your head that spins. It's not? No, it's actually your logo that spins, the logo head. That oh, spins. oh, oh, I thought it was my actual head, like exorcist style. <laughs> no, okay. I, mean, I always mean, that I think you misinterpreted that. I actually I mean, did. I thought it was my actual head. That's no. why I did that ridiculous dance no. just a minute ago. No, no it's actually <laughs> the logo. All right. The SC lo logo in your head there for the sports center. Maybe it's, I could maybe I could get them to stop the spinning. <laughs> I don't know. I'll talk to somebody. I'll talk to them uh, about that. Uh, but that's about that's what I mean by your logo, yeah, but... Okay, so the, the, the head, the, I, I, I always thought it was my head. I thought, I, literally, I thought you thought I was, I thought maybe you thought I was possessed by the devil as well, <laughs> but I'm not. Um, so that was it, like he got hurt. And, and then the was season it. was just such a nightmare. Yeah. It fell apart like so bad. Yeah. Scherzer, yeah. Who, was, who was like the, who's about as warm as a porcupine. <laughs> <laughs> I heard uh, the, the, everything I learned about Scherzer is two things. Okay. One, when the, the, the Japanese delegate mm -hmm. from the UN wanted to throw out the first pitch, uh -huh. and he was on the mound and he was doing his warm up tosses, he right. told the guy to get off, don't do the first pitch. That's he's a fiery competitor. He doesn't need he doesn't need this any first pitch ceremonial bullshit. He wants to get ready to. to, to and the uh, second incident was. I heard that he, when the Mets had the old timers a couple years ago, uh -huh. he was just in a sour mood and like, like pissed off that Dwight Gooden was using his locker. Really? Yeah. So what did he do? Like, did he did he punch Danny Heap? I don't know, but I just heard that uh, uh, that he is just a, just a genuinely unpleasant person. Yeah, but I think that's his whole th like. I don't say shtick because I think it's real. Like, I think he's just one of those people that's like, when I'm when I'm pitching, don't talk to me. Like, that's his thing. But the fact it it, it, it it wouldn't have been so bad if it didn't break apart like the way I, it I, did. Look, I get it because the, the cruel thing about what happened last year was with all the money spent. Like maybe even people like you and my guy Stanford Steve that oh he's a Mets fan as well. Like you maybe you let the optimism meter like start to flicker. You start to believe. Maybe I, I don't. Not even I, last year. No, uh, well a after, little bit after it fell apart. Well, I understand that, but I'm talking about like right now. Fe go back a year ago, February of 23. You're like, this is it. We're gonna have a parade. I thought they had a chance, good chance to win last year. Yes, I get it. And then uh, Diaz's injury and that uh, that 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 World Baseball. I, I hate the yeah. World Baseball Classic. Well, yeah, because your guy hurt his arm. Me. How about this? How about this, Frank? How about we? Get, I mean, can we, <laughs> can we take this all in? Just a moment. It's like we're here. Oh, we are. of course. Yeah. The Capitol, the monument. Lincoln Memorial under construction. But I mean, you know, my here was my whole idea. My whole thought was, it, and it doesn't have to happen yet. We just started walking and talking. But at the end of this, at the end of this, if we hug like Forrest Gump and Jenny, like, I don't know, I don't know if we go in here, I, I think we get arrested if we Yeah, do. I don't think it's a good idea. It's I don't want to go to jail. I don't want you in the booze <laughs> gal. I don't need that. But I feel like this is, it's, there's nothing more American than Frank becoming what you are. You're an icon, you're an American icon. And I felt like us walking here, we don't have to bury the hatchet. As I said, I have no illusions that at the end of this, you're still gonna be like, fuck Van Pelt, that's fine. It's fine, it's okay, but, it's kind of cool. Like this is the we're in this. This is the nation's capital. We're on a walk. What walk is this? One forty-five, forty-six. What is it? Uh, one forty. Uh, one forty-six. Yep. Yeah. You know. Uh, That's awesome, kid. By they the way. talk about uh, thanks. They talk about uh, Jenny and Forrest. Yeah. Uh, jumping in the pond together. Yeah. Do you know uh, around eighteen twenty something? John Quincy Adams used to skinny dip in this pond. He got buck naked and buck wild in this. Did he? <laughs> yeah. John Quincy Adams used to go skinny dipping in a reflecting pool. I didn't know that. <laughs> I know you're. You're. Are you? 
I, you're a history buff, yeah? Yeah, I like uh, little like little nuggets like that. Are you a book reader or are you just a fact knower? Fact knower. See, that's the way to be. Books, you, you, the fact knower beats book reader because book reader you end up wasting a bunch of time with yeah. stuff that doesn't like does like you see you read a book that tells you stuff about John Quincy Adams, who gives a shit? But you get John Quincy Adams just a skinny dip right here, drop that one on me, bang. I, I know fact when knower. I listen to audio. I, I I don't even I, I do audibles. Yes, <laughs> I'm just so 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 busy all the time. I, 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 I do like a lot of met books there, like a lot of like sports books. I'm not anti-book. I want to be clear about that. I'm just saying that if you had to choose one or the other, being a fact knower, oh. then, then you can impress at cocktail parties, yes. social gatherings, yes. in the office, things like that. A hundred percent. These non sequiturs, you just throw them out there and you impress people, I think. That's why uh, the Frank gets always ranked high in the uh, dozen tournament. Yeah. And it, except we're cursed. <laughs> we win in live, we, we win the live events and then we choke in the other events. You gotta button that up, Frank. <laughs> gotta button that up. We just need to get to a live event. We get to a live event, we we, we excel. Yeah. Yep. Does all like did, did, does this stuff like not the walks? Because who cares? Like I'm, I'm just a guy walking with you. But but like what you've become, like the videos of you, like you can't go to a stadium. People go berserk. <sighs> When you walk out into the world and you like, and you realize that you like the people, they don't like, they love you. Like this walk stuff, like what I sent you on the Twitter, I'm sincere. People are rooting for you there. They're thrilled to see what you're doing. Better on yourself, it's, light on your feet on the lacrosse field, all that stuff. It's good. Like, at how, do you do you get what that is? Oh yeah, it, 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 it's, it's great. awesome. Yeah, it's great, and it, it, and I love the fans. It's great. Ninety percent of the time. Ah, uh, here we go. But what this, happens? There's times where the ten percent. What happens in the ten percent? It just when I get when I get overwhelmed. Give the man some room. I got. Give him some room. I got a little overwhelmed on Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's, uh, just like I think I must have taken like two hundred pictures at this stadium series event uh, at the MetLife Stadium. And it was like, it was either go out in the concourse and be bombarded or sit in your seat and be cold. So I think be, dive in the deep end, go be with the people. But here's, I, I, here's my thought on that. Is I always say I'm a mirror. If people, like you reflect back with people, if people are kind, yeah. Then it's easy to reflect. Oh, that yeah. Back. Now you're all, there's always there's I shouldn't say always. Occasionally there's that person that decides they want to be an asshole. Oh. And I always say I to know them, that. If you're going to say that I was an asshole, I'll say you're right, you're right. But remember, you are an asshole first. I mean, that's uh, important. I, I have one I'll guy. never be that first. Never I had, be that first. But you can be that second because then it's not it's not unfair. And it's not unreasonable to just say, give me a second. Like you're not Santa Claus at the mall. You can say, just give me a second. I'll take, I'm happy to meet everybody. Yeah. Right? That's exactly how I feel. Uh, uh, the, this Black Friday game, the uh, Jets Dolphins, some guy literally grabs me by the nape of the neck. That was my fault, definitely. That was my fault. And it's like, and he's like screaming in my ear and like, 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 like push him off me. It's like, hey, 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 what's wrong about you? Right? Hold on, is that the president? No, no. I thought maybe the president was going to drop in and take a walk. <laughs> Just go see if Joe's around. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, I mean, this one guy called, uh, uh, sent a DM basically saying that uh, that uh, he was having heart troubles. Uh -huh. And then he started walking because of me. And he says that uh, the doctors are telling him that his heart's getting better really? just by walking. You feel better? You have like, I got it. Like it's it's momentum, right? Like what do they yeah. say? Body at rest stays at rest. Body in motion. Like you're the body in motion now. Like there's you, 146 becomes 147. Next thing you know, it's 200. Like yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, I still can't believe. Do you have a goal? Do you have like a goal in mind? No, just keep going. Just go. I I, I said like small goals. I I said small goals. Oh, this guy's circling. What are we doing? Choppers in the air. You never know. Yeah, you never know. But you got people that are just letting you know that they're out there yeah, walking they're, because of you. And I, I find that amazing. I find that, I find, I mean, my, my heaviest was probably 2016. I weighed around 500 pounds. Over 500 pounds, actually. I had MRSA. So that uh, got me, and I was really sick. Laid up for six weeks with that thing. Really? 
I missed the 30th anniversary reunion at City Field for the uh, 86 Mets. And uh, I was really laid up with that. And I started to feel a little bit better. I think I lost maybe some weight off of that. Uh -huh. Then I started at Barstool and I started a little bit of a walking regimen. That lasted maybe two years. I might have been, that got me actually under 400 finally. Okay. Uh, and then when I started full time, I kind of got, uh, I, during uh, COVID, I actually bloomed back up to about 450. And then I got back down to what I've been doing the last uh, six, uh, six months or so. Right. And that's really helped. You drop a little more, you could go. You could go like Adams and just skinny dip, just cannonball nude right in here. <laughs> Come back for a triumphant nude cannonball. It's a beautiful day, man. Yeah, it is. We lucked out. I mean, winter, winter, winter is beating me down. I mean, these walks get hard in the winter. Yeah, but and, spring and time's that, coming. Pop yeah. in the mid. Mets optimism meter zero. <laughs> we're working on. I on mean, the end of the walk, we're gonna have it at one. I mean, I look, I look at the. Uh, the prospects, and there's been so many prospects that have failed, that it like really discourages me too. Yeah. That it's like, uh, I mean, I go back all the way to Alex Ochoa. He was supposed to be great, and then. He had one good moment. He had one good moment where he hit for the cycle early in his Met career, and he never was consistent. I should be pissed at you, and I was like a toddler. The Orioles lost to the Mets in 69. Like, it's probably your fault. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it was your fault. Maybe I should blame you. Now, I guess the uh, fouls are turned off. It's, uh, it's winter, but I, this is nice. The uh, World War II memorial here. You got any World War II facts, nuggets? Uh, well, my grandfather who fought in the Pacific. Did he? Lost all his teeth. Lost all his what? Teeth. In the war? Yeah. I think it, you know, be, is it getting a bar brawl? I think <laughs> that. I How think, do you lose all his teeth in a war? I think maybe a, a bomb. What happened to your grandpa's teeth? I think maybe a bomb. Uh, he never, I never got the full details, but okay. he actually drove the uh, amphibian duck boats onto the land. Salute to so, Frank's grandpa driving the amphibian duck boats with no teeth. I mean, so I, th I, I think. You're not going to take our freedom. I don't have any teeth, but that's fine. So I got duck boats, bitch. Now so, what? So I think there might have been like a bomb or something like that went that went off close to him and he, they like caused him to lose his teeth. Yeah. And that was like his like big war wound. It was like he lost his basically his like his his like his jaw got broken and he like, okay had to wear false teeth the rest of his life because of uh, a war injury. And that was Frank on World War Two. I'm named after him too. He, he his name was Francis, but he hated the name Francis, so he was just Frank. Okay, that's why you're Frank. Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. My son's named after my pop. A little <laughs> honor, honor your family. Love that. Yep. My middle name is Earl because my grandmother on my mother's side is Earlis. Say that again. Your, your grandma on your mother's side? Yeah, her name was Earlis. Okay. So that's why my middle name is Earl. There you go. Frank Earl Fleming. <laughs> Love it. Now, I was uh, watching TV the other day. Okay. In my hotel room. Yep. And uh, what do you think about the Wizards and uh, Capitals potentially moving to Alexandria? Not a fan. Not a fan. See, it's, it's weird around here, Frank. If you live in Maryland, you look at Virginia like it's a foreign country. <laughs> and they look at Maryland in the exact same way. And it's, it's, they're the same place. They're just separated by a river. But there's something about the Virginia side where they look at you weird and, and vice versa. I'm not anti-Virginia. What I am is pro-district. I want those teams to be downtown. Like when they, you look at when they built the uh, Nationals, when the, when the Nationals built their new field, that area town was not a great area. Oh, I heard that that was like the worst area in the whole, it was, the whole it, area. That it was like basically, it was. it was like, you went there, you probably were gonna die. It wasn't great, it, but it's changed that area. The uh, having the Caps and the Wizards where they are downtown is is huge for the for that part of town. I just I just think that that I think that the team should be in the district. Like the, they they were the Redskins now they're the Commanders. They're in Maryland. They should be in RFK. Yeah, which, hopefully that happens. Soon. I think it will. I mean, I don't know for sure. There's all kinds of red tape, but I just I feel like those teams should be in DC because they're DC teams. So well, you know, uh, in a way, uh, the Devils and uh, Commanders are now connected. How's that? 
Josh Harris. There you go. <laughs> Josh Harris also owns the what Devils. What do you think of him? I'm a fan of his. You like him? Uh, he's all right. He, he stays out of the way. It's kind of what you he, want, isn't he it? He stays out of the way. Well, especially after watching his last football owner, you just want a guy that, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, it, last year was clearly a year of just evaluating. Right. And now it's new GM, new coach. Uh, I bet you if Dan Snyder was still uh, owner, he would have uh, uh, broken the bank to get Belichick here. And I don't know if Belichick's the right choice. I think I, I would like to see Belichick right off in the sunset, stay 16. No chance. He's stay, gonna, he, he wants to catch Shula. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> Dolphins. I, I, I'm aware. How would you rank, like, to me, from afar, it seems like Mets are obviously number one. Yes. I mean, clear, obvious, and then a pretty good line. It seems to me, based on, like, the rants, it feels like Devils are maybe your number two. Is that right? Well, Devils are every day. I, I mean, Devils, the Devils don't give me as much pain. The thing with the Devils is this year, there's been so many injuries and the bad defense has been just, like, driving me nuts. Understood. And, and the coaches, I, the, the coach, I didn't like the way he, he, I don't like the way he's treating Alexander Holtz. Okay. And, like, uh, like a reporter asked him a question, and he, like, got snippy with the reporter. Did you watch the game? Who got hurt? Wait, I'm trying to remember. I, I, I started, I, I'm sorry, I tapped out. I was trying to remember who got hurt, and it was my fault. It was it Hughes to get hurt? Yeah, Hughes. That was my fault. Yes, <laughs> you're just Mets? Mets number one, clearly. Then? Uh, then it might be the Dolphins slightly ahead of the Devils. It's more like 2A and 2B. Okay. Because NFL is the NFL. But the Dolphins, to me, like, I, don't, I don't feel like you have as much invested there. Like, you got pissed when they played the Chiefs. I get it. But I don't feel like you have as much. It's not, it doesn't feel like... The rage doesn't feel the, as, the, as the, the, uh, it reaches the same crescendo. It's, it's been a 20-year period of just... Utter irrelevancy. Yeah. And it's. Been a while. Uh, I tell you one thing. I hate their logo. Do you I hate the hate Dolphins the logo? Dolphins logo. What? I want the classic logo. I agree with that. All right. <laughs> All right okay. I thought you were like, because here's what I, I have. You know what the thing that the they did. Their, their throwbacks are so beautiful. Totally agree. But every throwback's beautiful. See, this is where this is where I think there's a little kindred spirit here. That I, I every great like, look at the Dolphins, old logo. Look at the Patriots old logo. The, the, it gets tricky because Tennessee and the Oilers, whatever. But when they wore those Oilers, how great are those powder blue, uh, love, love you blue Oilers uniforms? The Tremendous, thing is, right? The thing is, I wish they would have done the same thing that Cleveland did, Which and is, leave the name. To I Houston. agree with that. Like I think the I think the Texans should be the Oilers and be able to wear those uniforms. But yes. I guess that it gets tricky and all that. But every but this is just where we're old people and old people just like the old logos. But I don't think there's one old logo that's not better than the new logo. So when you said you didn't like the Dolphins logo, I thought you wanted some new like futuristic fish no. and then we're gonna fight right here. No, I love I love the throwback. <laughs> A no Dame fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's none of that. None of that. All love. We're hugging. We're hugging in this fucking no. pod right here is what we're doing. Uh, well, you took our you took our coach in basketball. I'm actually a Seton Hall Pirate fan when it comes to basketball. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Terps are on the struggle bus this year. It's on the struggle bus, but it's all right. We got the uh, uh, my my uh, grandfather's cousin actually once was president of Seton Hall University. Really, Monsignor Edward Fleming. When was this? Uh, like fifty something years ago. Really? Yeah. Well, what about Seton Hall? Like, I don't feel like it, it, I don't feel like there's been like I haven't seen rants about them. So you got I, it, it, not the same thing. I don't have the same passion for basketball as I have for baseball. There's only so much room in your heart yes. for passion and rage. And basketball is I just want to see Seton Hall make the tournament. I think they're gonna. And and I'm still pissed off in 1989 when they got screwed on that last play. Would you say that that you remember? I, I know, already know the answer. You're like a great coach. I think you remember the losses more clearly than the wins. Is that true? I think that is true. Why is that? I don't I, know. I'm not asking you to answer for the rest of them. I just think, what is it about being a fan that we won't let ourselves hang on to the joy? I hate losing more than I like winning. You know what? You're like Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan. <laughs> I didn't have that in my bingo card. Frank, <laughs> Tiger, and Michael Jordan. You're like I the hate, same. I hate losing more than I like winning. That's a curse, kind of. That's a curse because you got. You know what I always say? You got to. You got to enjoy the moments, like the, like in life. 
Because it's hard. You lose more than you win, mostly. I, I mean... You gotta let yourself enjoy the weight. I was 10, almost 11, when I met 20 and 86. And I wasn't able to stay up and watch the last out. Right. So I, the only thing I have is this video that I watched and to the point that the video was about to like break apart. And that was my... Uh, what was that? Oh, alright. Now here's one thing that's definitely better in the past, and I, it's not just because we're fuddy duddies, All-Star Games. All-Star Games, that NBA All-Star Game the other day? Not great. The, not uh, great. I, I said on Twitter, if you don't care, we don't care. And it just don't, it seems like they don't care. It was, uh, what, what gets me is, is it got to stages where first off they're doing like, trying to do like Globetrotter dunk offs. Right. Then and they then got into these like- court shots. What are we doing? <laughs> That's why baseball is all-star game, at least, like, it's still baseball. It's the yeah. one sport you can still play the exact yes. same sport. I right? mean, the, the intensity isn't what it used to be, but... Yeah, but at least it's baseball. Yes. At least it's guys pitching and yep. hitting and... Actually, not a lot of hitting. All-star games typically... Well, it's, it's been pitchers have taken over. But, yeah. Pitchers have taken over. You see, you get that, they go out there for one inning and they just they throw their hardest. Like, like they take us like an extra day bullpen session. Right. And they, they, they're hard to hit. I agree. I mean, that's uh, that's not a bad thing. It's just the way it is. They, when, they're I little, trying. when I was little, and I and like I'll never forget this. Ken Singleton hit a hit a home run in an All Star game in Cleveland, and it was I was so excited because it was an Oriole that hit an, a home run in an All Star game. Now, now part of that's being a little kid, right? But there was something about your guy having a moment oh. in an all-star game that, that felt massive. Am I right? Like, yeah. Did you feel the same way about the Mets? Uh, yeah, Dwight Gooden when he had struck out the side in 1984, although I really didn't become fully invested in the Mets in 85. You were a kid, you were young. Yeah. But yeah. Young Frank 86, like that had to be, that had to have been a scene. Like you had to just go bananas. My first two years fully invested in the Mets uh -huh. were 85 when he won 98 games. Had a bad week stretch when they had some injuries. Didn't win the division, but won 98 games. 98 games. And that team was very good. That was, so I, it was such a different time. Like, they'd be on NBC every Saturday, and it would always be good, and you had to watch, because he was just absolutely electrifying. It, 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 it sounded like a train sometimes. Really? That, he was on the mound. When he dropped the curveball on people? I, and then you had, uh, when you when, you first got into New York City at that in that, in that time. Uh -huh. There was a giant billboard for Nike that was Sorry. hanging over by the the uh, Port Authority terminal. Right. And it would have him like mid pitch, and it just had the swoosh and Dwight Gooden. Nothing else said. And that was you just saw that like mural every time you came into the city. The first thing you saw was that Dwight Gooden mural. So it was like, was he your favorite player? He might have been. He might have been. I loved it. I, I mean, Dwight Gooden, I can't wait till they retire his number in April. That's going to be exciting. I mean, we're long overdue. I, I, I mean, Dwight Gooden is such a complicated person and, and uh, figure, but I mean, it's, it's, uh, I'm genuinely sad every time he falls off the wagon. Every time I see him and he looks good, I feel good. I'm happy. But when he, like, uh, relapses, I, right. I genuinely... I genuinely feel very sad whenever that happens. And he's had his struggles. I think they're scrambling. I think they're scrambling choppers because it's like, wait, Van Pelt and Fleming are together. <laughs> like they're, they, they're like, a, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a movement afoot. <laughs> like you know, we. I mean, if you wanted to take over the country by the by sundown, like you'd be in charge. Well, the no whole country question. would be better off too, probably. Bang. <laughs> I mean, running it. I mean, passing laws, bills, edicts, things of that nature. I, I mean, at this point, we should take both both parties and be like Mo, smash your heads together like Larry and Larry and Carly. I'm pretty apolitical, just because I just I just think as a country, I feel like. I feel like we ought to be able to, to, to come up with something where yeah, we're a little well, bit more together than we are. That's, uh, why, that's what this is all about right here. This, Frank and You know who, you know who together. called this? That guy. Yeah? He did not, he, he was a reluctant president, George Washington. He was a reluctant president. He 
He could have been king. He said, no, I don't want to be king. I don't want, he stepped down after two terms, eight years. That, that set the standard for the two ter term limits. Right. And could have been king. He could George have been Washington. king if he wanted to. Could have been king. And he said that he doesn't like political parties because eventually it's going to lead to fragmentism and uh, like, uh, what's the word? I forgot the word he used. Uh, but it's like, they're going to be like, you said the fragmenting, splintering? Yeah, splintering, and, and they're going to be like gangs. They're uh, gonna be, I forgot the word he used. He didn't use gang, but it's going to be like gangs. Where it, it just like, far off, given the way things go. No, he's 100% right. It's, I mean, the COVID shot. That has become the most ridiculous thing ever. Yeah. I don't care if you're for it or against it, but in 2020, one party was trying to push this drug to get it fast-tracked to be passed. Uh -huh. And then... That party got out of power. Right. So the other party came in, and then they became the backers of the vaccine. Right. And the people who first fast wanted to fast track are the ones who refused to take the vaccine. Yeah. It's like South Park. <laughs> American history, South Park style. I mean, it's, it's rabble, 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 rabble. It's A lot of rabbling. I Did mean, George ever get buck naked in this water? Oh no. <laughs> I don't Adams know. Did. Quincy Adams did. <laughs> Quincy Adams did. It was 1820. Uh, he was president in 1820s, early 1820s. Getting back to the Alexandria thing, that Ted Leonis, he came off as like a jerk. The way he was Leonis, like, Le he's he's uh he's he's uh it's, it's tricky. It's tricky. There there are people there there are a lot of people in DC that are really bummed out. Because, because, he, because he's like like. They're saying that A. Poland was a, a philanthropist. Yep. I'm a businessman. Well, this is, the, this is, I mean, here's how it works with owners. If you win, they love you, and if, and if yeah. you don't, they don't. It's, it's just very simple, and that's, that's not unique to D.C. That's anywhere. That's, how you, that's why you feel the way you feel about, about Cohen. Yeah. He should yeah. go on a walk with you, by the way. Yes, he should. Steve Cohen should don't come walk, on a walk. Don't walk. Walk. Yes. It doesn't rhyme, but it kind of rhymes. But yeah, it don't, does. Don't it walk. does. Walk with you, Frank. You know, maybe he could explain himself. Maybe Man's saving lives, helping maybe, people with heart issues. Come, come for a walk. Maybe he could like, like get get my mind right. Get me off this this like period of dread where I look at the prospects and I go, okay, is this gonna be another Brett Beatty? I mean, I've I've seen so many prospects bust. Come on, and and uh, go for a walk. And why doesn't he? Why isn't Pete Alonso signed? Why? What are we I doing? Mean, I mean, P uh, P by the time the walk's over, you'll have it sorted out. I mean, P terms Lons and conditions. Pete Alonso should be a Met for life. Right? This guy's, this guy's gonna hit 500 homers. They should all be in a Mets uniform. All of them. If all they're not, them. what are we doing? I mean, uh, I mean, exactly. I mean, I mean, we signed all these old fogies. And now he's afraid to sign people because he signed the old fogies. Huh? I mean, I, and now he's got his fourth different general manager. Essentially, David Stern is the GM now. Right. I mean, there's been it's been like changing directions every time, and it's hard for me to trust. It's hard for me to trust, especially. The guys got trust issues, Steve. I, I honestly think the Mets are going to lose 100 games this year. No, it's, no, 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 no. They're not going to lose 100 games. Please don't lose 100 games, because I can only take so much. <laughs> I can only take so much, and it, I, we all know whose fault it'll be. This guy. <laughs> this guy. Actually. I don't blame you anymore. You know what? I'm coming for you, Butchergrass. I'm coming for you. Is this a, is this a moment? Can we hug like Forrest yeah, Gump? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't blame me anymore. He doesn't blame. I think. I think. Did we bury it? Is yeah, it we buried the hatchet. It's uh. It's really a, it's really a wonderful moment, everybody. <laughs> Steve, come for a walk. Pete Alonso, get that sorted out. Bucci Gross, you really call him Bucci? He's awesome, by the way. He's a good dude. Do you like Bucci? Yeah, but it's fun to say that name. It's like kind of like uh, David Letterman with Butros Butros Kali. It is like that. <laughs> and I think I think that's I think that's a great idea. I think Bucci Maine should be a. We all Buster. That's a different topic. Oh, uh, Buster. Bu he hates the Mets. Oh, I know. He fucking hates them. I, hate I, I mean, yeah. uh, if I can recall, in 1999, he said that. Uh, the Mets were the JV team and the Yankees were the varsity when they were going to play Buster? the World Series. Come on, man. Come on. I, I mean, I remember that. But what thank if, what if, what if, honestly, what if they land right here and they scoop us up? Like, what about this? I feel like, I feel like if, the, if, if, 
if you walk away from this feeling good about it, I feel like you and me should do like a Netflix series where we do like a buddy, like a buddy cop thing. Like we just wander America and get into adventures and capers well, and things I'm, like that. I'm looking to go on a dirty ballpark tour, so that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be interesting. Uh, I got a job and kids and whatever. It might be difficult, <laughs> but maybe I just maybe I just abandon all of it and just me and Frank hit the road and hit parks. Get the, across get the RV. Get the we RV. We just raw dog, just dogs across America. <laughs> you and me. Every state. A raw dog. How many how many parks have you been to? How many parks? Oh, well, fourteen overall. Okay. We well, need to we need to up that. We get sponsors. This the, like yeah. come on. This this should be easy. I mean, uh, sponsors should be lining up for this. I have been to Washington. I've been to National Park. I was there the first three games of the 2022 season. Nice park. Good yeah. park. Get an yeah. RV. Tour tour America. You got the crew. You got great people behind you. Yes. They've got your back. I yes. got your back. America's got your back. We got to be able to we, get Alonso sign. Get Cohen on a walk. And uh, a tour across America with you on a like a a really nice coach, like like something that like uh, it would be like Tom Madden's bus. No, nah, better than that. Like I was thinking, like a like a good rock band, but not a great rock band. Like maybe the Alan Parsons Project. Yes, yes, good one. Wait, hold on. Oh no, I want to leave, leave you with this. I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to leave. I don't want to get it wrong. I was gonna play this. Big Cat told me to play it. After all the years of waiting, I'm gonna show them all. Yes. Right? That's well, your song, right, Limelight? Yes, that was the song that was played on NBC after Game 7, the Mets highlight montage after the World Series. Yeah. And it, make, it makes me choke up every time I hear the song. And I didn't want, I didn't want this to be emotional, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, the, we've hugged. Bucci Gross is on the chopping block, and I'm, I'm good. Bust, well, Buster's not, but, but I'm, good. I'm good. Well, thank you for showing up. This is a great honor that you will no, join No, I'm just a guy like you, man. I'm a sports fan you. like you. Thank you. Uh, of oh, course, double. we got to thank uh, the uh, body armor. I mean, this, they power me. They power uh, with my walks. Boom. Product placement and, um, and a swig. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, Look at this. Sponsors. <laughs> get, get behind this man. Ballpark tour. But thank you. Uh, and uh, Hatchet's buried. John Boots across. You're next. <laughs> There's no chance. There's no chance it's Barry, but I'm going to walk away and trust that it is. Frank, I All appreciate right. you. Thanks. Keep doing your walks, bro. I'm serious. Thanks. It's awesome.